crippling cost of living crisis, below inflation pay rises and burnout are driving hardworking junior doctors out of the NHS. Over the last five months, the NHS in England has seen a third of their medical workforce, which is the junior doctors, go on strike time and time again, equating to about 19 full days of lost productivity. But how have things got to this point? Why are junior doctors going on strike when they're meant to help patients, not harm them? And what do they actually want? Hi, I'm Dr. Ollie, a junior doctor based in the UK. And the short answer to all the above is essentially money. Junior doctors want to be paid more money because they feel that their salary has fallen, lagged behind, far behind inflation, especially with the current cost of living crisis. An average junior doctor's salary compared to sort of 2000 to 2010, 2011 levels has dropped about 26%. So about a quarter smaller than it used to be. And essentially junior doctors just want pay restoration to bring their pay back into line as to where it used to be. This equates to just under 5,000 pounds to 2010, 2000 levels. But with the rate that inflation is going this year, this could end up being just under 10,000 pounds by the end of this year. Although the average junior doctor does earn above the median salary for the UK, I think it's fair to say anyone losing 10,000 pounds out of their salary, you're gonna feel it and it's gonna impact you, especially in a cost of living crisis. Now the British Medical Association, which is the trade union for doctors in England, have released sort of the three reasons that they're going on strike. And the first is they want full pay restoration to 2008, 2009 levels. They also want to agree a mechanism with the government to prevent future declines in pay as a result of future inflation because otherwise they think they'll end up in exactly the same situation as they are now again in the future. And the third reason that junior doctors are going on strike is because they want a reform and review of the DDRB, which is the Doctors and Dentists Review Body for Pay. This is an independent body that's meant to advise the government on how much they should pay doctors because the majority of doctors work in the NHS, they don't work privately, so there's less of that sort of supply and demand element that will determine their pay. So it's up to the DDRB to tell the government what a fair level of pay would be to pay NHS doctors. But junior doctors and consultants at, the, at present they don't feel that the DDRB is doing a fair job. They don't feel like they're fighting their corner enough and telling the government what they're really worth. And to be fair, I think a lot of their concerns are somewhat grounded. You know, we're in a cost of living crisis. Inflation is sort of eight, nine, ten percent. And the DDRB is recommending to the government, you know, single, you know, five percent pay rise potentially. They also feel like the government has been able to pressure the DDRB into making these lower recommendations. So it's meant to be an independent body, but doctors feel that the government has been able to exert political pressure in order to have them recommend a lower number because that helps with NHS costs and the overall budget. To get a fuller understanding of current happenings and a bit of background on the situation, we actually have to go back to 2015. Because in 2015 was when Jeremy Hunt proposed a new contract for junior doctors. He'd sort of announced in the 2015 Conservative Manifesto that he wanted to change the NHS from a five-day service into more of the seven-day NHS. So you could see a consultant and, and get any tests or, or things needed whatever day of the week it was, which, which on paper I think was a great idea. But in order to do that, he wanted to change the junior doctor contract so essentially it would be cheaper to employ doctors on weekends. It makes sense, you know, if you've got a limited NHS budget, you want to provide a seven day service, you're going to have to find some cost savings somewhere. Unfortunately, doctors of course were not on board with this idea. Essentially it was scrapping a lot of their overtime payments. It was increasing their base pay, but essentially scrapping their overtime payments for a lot of evenings and weekend shifts. Now, Jeremy Hunt in 2015, he essentially threatened to impose this new contract on junior doctors, whether they liked it or not. They did not like it. So 
they balloted to strike in November 2015. More than 99% of junior doctors voted in favour of industrial action and on the 12th of January 2016, junior doctors went on strike for the first time in over 40 years. Now from this point in sort of late 2015, early 2016, junior doctors in the government continued to have disputes and arguments and discussions around this new contract. On the one side, the government wanting junior doctors to essentially be able to cover more out of hours on weekends. On the other, junior doctors wanting to protect their you know, well-earned pay for these out of hours and unsociable shifts. Fast forward from early 2016 to May 2019 and junior doctors in the government have finally reached an agreement. They've decided on an 8.2% pay rise for junior doctors paid over four years. In this agreed contract, however, that ended the four year dispute between junior doctors and the government, it did specify that the DDRB, the Doctors and Dentists Review Body, was able to make further recommendations to the government if they felt that it was needed for doctors pay to be increased. So essentially, although they had agreed an 8.2% pay rise over four years, that wasn't black and white locked in the only thing they were going to get. Essentially, in the contract that they'd sort of agreed between the government and junior doctors, it did say that further recommendations could be made. And that's sort of at the heart and what's kicked off all the current disputes. It's essentially that the whole of the UK has seen, you know, almost record levels of inflation. And yet, despite this, doctor's pay has just continued to reflect that originally agreed 8% pay rise, which doesn't really seem fair. You know, doctors don't feel that that is in any way fair because that agreement was made and reached as a fair deal when inflation was, you know, over 5% lower than it is today. The impact of doctors striking has also been somewhat disastrous on the NHS. Every time junior doctors go on strike, there are thousands of elective operations cancelled, there are thousands of appointments cancelled. And although these aren't emergency things, you know, emergency care, if a patient still goes to A&E, if a patient still needs an ambulance, if a patient still needs an emergency operation, all those things are still provided. But sort of the more routine things like uh, a hip replacement for someone who's been waiting 18 months or a review from a specialist who might have been waiting for that appointment for months and months and months. Those things are all being cancelled and although they're not sort of emergency life-saving, it does unfortunately have a real impact on patients and essentially worsens their quality of life. Every time junior doctors go on strike, it also costs the NHS millions of pounds in cover for these doctors. So that could be consultant cover, which is hiring senior doctors in order to cover the jobs of the junior doctors who are going on strike. This has also been compounded by a recent High Court ruling that said that agency staff should not be allowed to fill posts of doctors, in this example, going and, and taking industrial action, which means hospital trusts and NHS trusts, they're not able to just hire outside doctors or nurses in order to fill the shifts and vacancies made from their own staff going on strike. With things continuing the way they are, it's looking less and less likely that Rishi Sunak is going to be able to stick to his original promise of reducing NHS waiting lists, which everyone wants, but the fact that junior doctors keep on going on strike and the fact that every time this happens, thousands of operations, thousands of appointments are cancelled, it just looks like this isn't going to happen unless a solution is reached. So with such dire consequences of each time junior doctors go on strike, why doesn't the government want to give a pay rise? And I think it's fair to say that the main driving factor behind this obstinance is the fact that money is tight. Money's tight not just across the NHS, but across the whole budget and England in general. Giving junior doctors, you know, what they're asking for, potentially a 26% pay rise back to their original restoration of pay, is going to massively increase the running costs of the NHS. It's also going to help fuel inflation, which is a larger problem for the UK and a larger issue for the electorate. It could also be argued that almost acquiescing to junior doctors at this moment only paves the way for future strikes and future demands and future sort of industrial action, which will only lead to a snowball effect of the government sort of being backed into to a corner. As a junior doctor myself, I think it's fair to say that none of my colleagues want to go on strike, but it is seen as a necessary action to prevent future harm coming to the NHS and patients in the future. Because if things just continue as they are, essentially as time progresses, less, fewer and fewer people are going to want to work in the NHS. The NHS is going to see continuing 
increasing numbers of doctors sort of leaving for Australia, New Zealand, Canada, increased staff vacancies, increased rates of burnout, and all of that is just going to compound to worse and worse patient care and patient outcomes in the NHS in the future. Although the strikes in the short term, there is the unfortunate fact that patient care is going to be impacted by the junior doctor strikes. It's seen as sort of a short-term evil for a long-term benefit for the NHS that is long overdue. All I can say is that I hope an agreement is reached quickly between junior doctors and the government so that no further strikes need happen in the future.